Nowadays, there appears to be a certain race in education, this desire to get ahead of everyone else in your grade. Now, of course, there's a Chinese saying that goes along with this, something along the lines of, if you don't get into a good preschool, you won't get into a good elementary school. <laughs> if you don't get into a good elementary school, your chances at getting into a good middle school are essentially non-existent. And so the chain goes throughout high school, college, and beyond. Now in China, admission to these high-end schools is based on a student's performance on a single test. So if you have an off day and you don't perform up to your personal standard, you'll be forced into a mid-range school receiving a mid-range education and paving the way for your mid-range career in life. Meanwhile, here in the U.S., there's a greater deal of flexibility regarding, say, undergraduate admissions for college, where everyone is, on the surface at least, given an equal opportunity for a spot at that dream school. But even so, the race for the lead has begun to seep throughout the educational system, even approaching the sacred playgrounds and sandboxes of the elementary schools. And this is where we come in. Given this increased demand in extracurricular enrichment, who better to teach elementary schools more advanced material than us high schoolers? We've got the time, we've got the energy, and we need those darn volunteer hours, so here we are. <laughs> but what's in it for us? Why do we do this if, on the surface, it just appears a little like slave labor? Well, as high schoolers, we're approaching one of the more critical junctures of our lives. What am I going to do to look good for X university? What is my passion? How am I at 15, 16, 17 years old supposed to know what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? Now, I found myself in this situation a couple years ago. I took one of those questionnaires that claims to pinpoint suitable professions for you. And my results, doctor, lawyer, pharmacist, computer scientist, engineer. Not too helpful. I also tried the see yourself in that profession technique. You know, maybe, maybe I'll be a pharmacist. Earnings and job security look good for the next 15 years or so. But so they do for a lot of those jobs. Still searching for my passion, that year I took AB Computer Science. I did well in the class, and I really fell in love with programming. I thought, this is it, I'll be a programmer. But wait. I may be good at in-class tests and programs, but does that mean I really love to do this? The next year, I dug a little deeper, founded the Computer Science Club at Westlake. Everyone in the audience who attends Westlake should definitely join, by the way. <laughs> Many clubs at my school don't go out into the community, so one of my main goals for our club was to go out and teach programming, and attempting something that many established clubs wouldn't do was definitely a risk. Now, there is a time in everyone's life when Murphy's Law seems to take hold and everything that can go wrong does go wrong. If you're charging headfirst in the community to teach something, something will no doubt go wrong. I'm just saying to be aware that something may happen and keep an open mind and try to adapt to any challenges you may face. In my case, I offered the club's services to organizations in the community, such as the Teen Center, and the Boys and Girls Club, but our requests were politely declined, and progress to my grand goal seemed to fizzle. When all seemed bleak, who could come to my rescue? My brother Owen. One day, he came home and told me that his principal was searching for a volunteer teacher to teach programming for his school's gifted and talented education program. The club was excited to jump at this opportunity and decided to teach Scratch programming software created by MIT. With a handful of loyal club members, I entered Lang Ranch Elementary School to face something more deadly and more volatile than the SAT and junior year combined. <laughs> elementary school kids. <laughs> <laughs> now, for the first day, I'd planned to teach the class using a guide for making a Mario game that I'd enjoyed as a child. However, I quickly realized that they had varying experience levels and that I needed to change my curriculum. Instead, I focused on key programming concepts such as loops and conditional statements and allowed the students to express their creativity within their own games. This means that I did have to think on my feet to adjust my answers uh, to, their, to each student's game. 
But I loved helping the kids and watching their faces when a student's shark gobbled up several unsuspecting fish, or another's pie finally found the face of its target. <laughs> so teaching kids can be a sort of a test to determine your passion. If you really love to do something, chances are you wouldn't mind teaching it to someone else or trading somewhere in the community for you to do so. For me, the class was a wonderful opportunity to expose myself to something completely new and allowed me to confirm my passion. It definitely isn't the only way to confirm passion, but I see it as a cyclical one. Through teaching others, you can confirm your passion, which you will naturally, in turn, continue to share with others. This is a win-win situation, a process that challenges you to take the initiative, discover your passion, and forge your own pathway to kids, to the community, and to your future. What could be more enjoyable than that? Thank you.